to serve northeastern and central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Frank Andrews, Marisa Burke, meteorologist Paul Hefner, and Jay Christopher's report. This is Newswatch 16 this morning. Good morning, everyone. 28 minutes now before 7 a.m. This is Newswatch 16 this morning for Wednesday. It is the 4th of September for most schools. The first day back to class. Now, if you're wondering how to dress the kids on this muggy morning, here's meteorologist Paul Hefner in the backyard with this morning's Weather Watch forecast. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Frank. And the way to dress the kids today is to grab something white out of the closet because even though the calendar says it's the first week of September, it'll feel just like the first week in July. Morning temperatures right now near 70. By the afternoon, they'll be up near 90, so Frank, it'll be a scorcher. It's going to be a tough day to sit in class, but for tens of thousands of students here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, it is back to school today for the first day of a new school year. Now, although some school districts are already back in session, for most, today is the day to meet the new teachers, make new friends, and start the new school year. State colleges and universities are also back in session today. Some, though, have the threat of a teacher's strike hanging over their head. But another round of talks to head off the strike is set for tomorrow morning. Faculty members at 14 state colleges and universities are in contract negotiations. One school involved, Bloomsburg University, you see here from SkyCamp 16. Now, the unionized professors' contract ran out in July. They say if a new pact is not worked out soon, they could hit the picket lines by the end of October. The new negotiating session set for Thursday morning to try and head off that professor strike in Pennsylvania. One state university is starting a very unique program this year. A non-alcoholic bar is to give students who prefer not to drink a different option. Now, this is the lounge area at Lockhaven University in Clinton County that's going to be transformed into the non-alcoholic bar called Cheers. We feel that we'll be able to cut back substantially to the alcohol-related problems on this university. Now, the idea comes from a similar non-alcoholic bar at Westchester University. Officials there say with entertainment involved, the non-alcoholic bar becomes a popular place on campus. Officials at Penn State University say this morning that it has been ranked third in the nation among colleges and universities that receive money from industry for research and development. Penn State officials say that last year it received almost $12.5 million to fund research programs on campus. Now the money is used in part to help students involved in Penn State's economics programs. There's a new optimistic report in Pennsylvania's economy this morning. The Labor Department in Harrisburg says the unemployment rate in this state dropped one full percent in the month of July, and that other economic indicators show that our economy is strong and still growing. Now, the index of economic indicators for Pennsylvania up five-tenths of a percent in July. Now, that's across the state, and economists say that means the factories are putting out more merchandise and that it is selling at the retail level. Overall, in the month of July, 48,000 unemployed people found jobs in Pennsylvania. And still to come on Newswatch 16 this morning for a Wednesday morning, meteorologist Paul Hefner with more on the Weather Watch forecast. Instead of a class, you may want to jump into a pool. The details from the backyard when Newswatch 16 this morning returns is 23 and a half before 7 a.m. Win up to $1,000. Pick up your Let's Go to the Races tickets at your participating IGA supermarket today. The more you shop, the greater your chance to win. At IGA, we've got the good. There's good and friendly service from folks who live right in your neighborhood. We're committed to it. And to you. There's good prices from volume buying, made possible by IGA's nationwide organization. There's good selection, with each IGA store stocked up with the items the people who shop there prefer. There's good locations, good produce, good beef, good bakeries, good deals, good deals, good buys. <laughs> the style of Storm Dyke Academy, our boys display exemplary behavior. Occasionally, we do have an outbreak of uh, high spiritedness. When we sit in the top of the we rely on harmony. It's me. It's the largest cow you can buy. And it's strong enough to handle even the toughest jobs. Thanks ever so much, Brawny. Anytime, Keith. <laughs> New Brawny, the big tough cow. Mason Furniture of Hazelton and Pottsville presents a Texas size sale with Texas size savings of 28 to 69 percent on fine furniture from now through September 21st. You'll find a Texas size.
time to like this all famous name. Texas Style savings of 40 to 60 percent on daily betting sets. Texas Style special financing with up to six months to pay interest free. And agents give you a twin guarantee on price and construction in writing. Don't miss the Texas Style sale going on now at Nathan's Furniture, Hazleton, and Pottsville. Good morning, everyone. 21 and a half minutes before 7. You know, all the kids that are going back to school, they have all their new outfits to choose from. They want to hear this weather watch forecast to see which one to pick, if they have to go back. You know, good morning, Paul. Good morning, Frank. I think the one to pick is a nice pair of shorts and a nice short sleeve shirt, because uh, even though it's the first week of September, we're looking at some very summer-like weather and uh, temperatures this afternoon approaching 90 degrees. Let's jump right into the current readings this morning, and we are starting on the warm side. Right now it's 70 degrees, the relative humidity is quite high, 93%. There is some patchy dense fog around this morning that will burn off rapidly. The wind from the southwest, 8 miles per hour. The barometer falling off just a little bit from 30.00 inches. Here's a look at that sunrise. 6.32 this morning, sunset tonight at 7.31. And indeed a good day to jump into the falls and cool off. Let's take a look at the temperatures this morning. 70 in the backyard, 67 up in the Poconos. Everyone, very, very warm. These temperatures are a good 10 to 15 degrees above normal. 71 Allentown, smoking 66. Some dense fog being reported in Williamsport this morning. Temperatures 66 degrees. Now, we're not the only ones having this warm weather this morning. 75 degrees in Buffalo, New York. You can bet that they kept the windows open last night to cool off up there. Readings all the way up into New England were in the upper 60s near 70. And temperatures out across the Midwest, also near 70. So indeed, a very warm night for many, many people. Okay, here's a look at the satellite picture for the morning hours. And we're looking at some clouds up to our north. Some showers contained in those clouds. No problem for us today. Our weather will be coming from a high-pressure system just offshore, pumping in warm and humid air. Temperatures well up into the 80s to near 90. There's a little batch of thunderstorms down by Tampa, Florida. Dumped four and a half inches of rain on them yesterday, which, by the way, was more than what they had in the entire Hurricane Elena storm. The remnants of Hurricane Elena still dumping some rains on Arkansas and Louisiana this morning, one to two inches of rain, but the whole system is drying up. In fact, by the time it reaches us, it'll just be a few clouds, maybe a couple of scattered showers. No big problem here. The weather map for the afternoon hours will show that high pressure system just offshore, cranking in that warm and humid air, 90 to 95 degrees prevalent from the Tennessee Valley up into Pennsylvania. This week's front will drop down across New York State tomorrow, and as it does so, I think that we'll see a couple of showers developing here. Uh, some showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon hours for Thursday and Friday. The temperature is still warm, well up into the 80s on uh, tomorrow. The roasting sunshine for today, high temperature 85 degrees in Waymark, Red Rock. A little bit higher up in elevation, we'll be in the mid-80s, but once you get down into some of the uh, valleys like Stroudsburg, the high temperature 89 degrees. Fisher's Ferry over by Northumberland County, maybe this afternoon. Wow, hot day. Okay, that's what we have on the Weather Watch forecast for today. Hot and humid, 87 in the backyard, hazy, sun, uh, hazy sunshine, hazy tonight. The sunshine, let me mildly surprised, 68 degrees. For tomorrow, some thunderstorms around, some showers continuing into Friday. And as I see it, warm temperatures going into the first part of the weekend. Uh, partly cloudy skies on Saturday, 82 degrees. So, Frank, we do have a warm one today. Boy, that's Murphy's Law. Last week, the last week of vacation for most, was kind of cool and rainy. This week, they're back. It's hot and sunny. We could have used some of this weather uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we should have. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Briefly, here are some of this morning's top national and international news headlines. Federal and state officials hit the road again this morning surveying the damage done by Hurricane Lena. In Mississippi alone, the damage estimated at around a half billion dollars. The state's coastal region has been declared a disaster area. The Algerian embassy in Beirut, Lebanon, has a three-foot hole in its side this morning. Now, police there say a bomb went off outside the consulate early this morning. The Christian Voice of Lebanon radio program says Islamic Amal is claiming responsibility for that bombing in Beirut, Lebanon. And summer vacation is also over for the U.S. Congress. The House goes back in session today. The Senate will convene again in Washington Monday. Now, this session, the lawmakers have to deal with trade bills, proposed economic sanctions against South Africa, and tax reform. News Watch 16 this morning continues in a moment. We'll have more local news. We'll tell you about a recall of some General Motors and Volkswagen cars. And News Watch 16's Kathy Bellick will have a report from Archibald where neighbors are fighting plans for a power plant near their home. Please watch 16 this morning continues in a moment. It's coming up on 17 minutes before 7 a.m. If you're looking for a simple, affordable way to heat your home, the Alaska Stoker Stove is the answer. It's the only coal stove in America that can burn unattended for three days and heat up to 1,800 square feet. The Stoker Stove is the perfect solution for those who are tired of burning wood. 50 years of technology allows you to heat your home with only two tons of coal. 
It sits underneath a beautiful cabinet and replaces any fireplace insert. Spend more time with your family this winter, not a stove. Visit Alaska Company Outlet, Bloomsday PM. I'm going to let you go this time, boy. But don't let the sun set on your naked pickup in my county. Hear me, boy? Don't get caught with a naked pickup. Put on an armadillo. Useful, rugged, beautiful, protective, better gas mileage. Call your dealer listed under Armadale. LP Armadale. Moscow. The direct manufacturer's representative. Some neighbors in the Lackawanna County community of Taylor, who were worried about two barrels suspected of containing toxic waste, can rest a little bit easier this morning. The Environmental Protection Agency says the 55-gallon drums found over the weekend at the abandoned old Scranton landfill were left there by EPA cleanup crews last month. Now, the drums contained soiled work clothes, equipment, and soil left over from the testing that was done there. Some neighbors living uh, near the site are afraid that deadly poisons may be buried there. They've asked the EPA to clean up the old Scranton landfill in Taylor. Tests done on their soil to determine if there's any contamination to be back in two months, according to officials. Dozens of neighbors from the Lackawanna County community of Archibald met with the borough council last night. They are continuing their fight against plans to build a power plant in that community, now, a plant that would turn combanks into energy. But as Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellis reports this morning, those plans have suffered another setback. <laughs>
Are you thinking of updating that old heating system? Pennsylvania Gas and Water Company asked Mrs. Reardon in Techville why she switched to natural gas. I really enjoy the economy and savings. I like to save money, and the natural gas, I do. Elliot Katuna of Jing King, what do you like about natural gas? It's clean and efficient. That's why all of our Jing Kings, including our newest Kingston store, feature natural gas. Natural gas, America's first choice heating fuel. Now, there's a new kind of toilet tissue. New quilted noise. It's quilted, so you can see how soft it is. But mostly, you can see it. Nine minutes before seven. Good morning. Are you rested up from the telethon? Pardon? Are you rested up? Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. Thanks, Frank. Kansas City has drawn within a half game of uh, first place California as the two teams continue their fight for the top spot in the American League West. Let's give you some of the Royals' 3 2 victory highlights over the White Sox last night. Here's Bud Fotopoulos. The Royals got two runs off Tom Seaver in the first inning when Hal McRae drove a fastball over the center field fence more than 400 feet out with George Brett on base. Center fielder Lynn Jones saved at least one run in the second inning when he ran to the fence to bring down Jerry Heston's long drive with a man on. The Sox failed to score then but did pick up a run in the third when Harold Baines hit a sacrifice fly to left that enabled Rudy Law to score. It was 2-1. to one. Law turned in a defensive gem of his own in the fifth inning when he took away an extra base hit from Daryl Motley, crashing into the fence after making the catch. The Royals got a run in the eighth, and the Sox got one in the ninth. That came on a home run by Baines, his 16th. It was 3-2. to two. Brett Saberhagen got the next two men to end the game, the youngster picking up his 17th victory as the Royals beat the White Sox 3-2. to two. This is Bud Petopoulos reporting. Elsewhere in the American League overnight, the Yankees sank Seattle 6-3. Phil Necro posted career win 298. Here's part of the action. Yanks, Dan Pasqua makes this pitch a memory as he planted the shot into the seat, the two-run homer. But as part of a five-run first inning, Yanks went on to win that one by a score of 6-3. Yanks clean a half back at Toronto. Okay, Detroit beat California 14-8. Here's the Tigers' Kirk Gibson. He tagged one, a big homer off the facade in the upper deck. And then... Mr. Reggie Jackson, you'll see, picked this one off, number 21. Later in the game, he hit number 22. Nice going red. Down the scoreboard. Detroit blasted California, 14-8. Oakland tops Baltimore, 3-2. New York outlasted Seattle, 6-3. Boston beat Texas, 6-4. Kansas City defeated Chicago, 3-2. And Minnesota defeated Milwaukee, 4-3. National League. The St. Louis Cardinals stayed a game ahead of New York in the National League East with a 6-4 win over the Cincinnati Reds. Rose did not play. He's still 6 shy. Six hit shy, high cop hit record. Game action, cards trailing 2 nothing in the eighth. Andy Van Slyke planted this one into the seat, a two-run shot. It was tied then. Cards eventually won at 6-4. And here's how the Phils won their day game in San Francisco. Ozzy Virgil shot, hit the flagpole, bounces in. Phils win at 4-3 in 13 innings. On the electric scoreboard, Houston edged Chicago 8-7 in 10. Philadelphia outgunned San Francisco 4-3 in 13. Atlanta shut down Pittsburgh 2-0. St. Louis defeated Cincinnati 6-4. New York drilled San Diego 8-3. Gary Carter, three homers in that one. And Los Angeles shut out Montreal 4-0. Wilkes College head basketball coach Bart Belairs has resigned his post in favor of becoming an assistant coach at the University of Maryland. Belairs will become part of the caravans of College Park under Coach Lefty Drizel. I worked at summer camp for uh, for this year, and uh, Coach Drizel had uh, talked to me about the position, and I interviewed last Thursday for it, and then Sunday night he called me, and uh, we worked things out, and I'm excited about the opportunity to work for Coach Drizel and the University of Maryland. And Ron Rainey will fill in for Belairs. Here's the, this week's Super 16 High School football rankings. There's been some shuffling. Number one is Valley View, followed by Wyoming area, Dunmore, Berwick, Loyal Sox, Blue Mountain is six, Williamsport seven, GER eight. Then it's Coughlin, Pottsville, Tamaqua, Shemokin, Southern Columbia, Homesdale, Whitehall, and Mount Carmel comes in at number 16. In the U.S. Open Tennis Championships in New York, Ivan Lendl was tested in the early going in his match with, uh, against Jaime Izaga of Peru. The young Peruvian played a spirited game against the second-seeded Lendl, but eventually fell 4-6, 6-3, 6-4, and 6-love. 
Lundell's victory earned him a berth in the quarterfinals that begin tomorrow in New York. Fishing game forecast for Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. 6.30 this morning is history, but 6 o'clock tonight may be a good time if you decide to go doing uh, some fishing. Uh, <laughs> not guaranteed, though. Those pennant races are getting tight. Oh, they certainly are. Usually the team that's uh, on top in their division, September 1st, usually go to the series. Toronto. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dave. News Watch 16 this morning continues in a moment. We'll have more on the Weather Watch forecast. More on our top story. Affordable housing. The final frontier. Wyoming home. Ongoing mission to seek out alternative housing, to turn renters into buyers, to boldly do what no manufactured home dealer has done before. Wyoming Homes makes housing affordable for everyone. Wyoming Homes has modular homes and the biggest selection of mobile homes, all displayed in a beautifully landscaped setting. Wyoming Homes has two locations to serve you, Route 11 Exeter, Route 11 Bloomsburg. Motor Swing Ford has its lowest rate ever. It's our 7.7 .7 sale on new 85 Ford trucks and cars. And Motor Twins has more to choose from. This is Steve Morango from Motor Twins. It's our 7.7 .7 sale of the century, or get up to $1,000 cash back from Ford. It's for a limited time only at the Ford Giant in Kingston or Works Fair. And remember, you never need a down payment to drive away in a brand new Ford truck or car from Motor Twins, the Ford Giant. Good morning, everyone. If you're just joining us three minutes before seven, here again our top stories. Today's the first day of school for most schools in our viewing area. Now, although some school districts have already gone back into session, for most of the school bells ring this morning. There are no teacher strikes keeping students out of class in northeastern and central Pennsylvania this year so far. Later this morning, the Luzerne County Commissioners meet to decide whether to reopen the Manitoke West Manitoke Bridge. It was close to traffic over the weekend when a hole opened up on the deck. If the commissioners keep the bridge close, it may stay that way until it's renovated next year. And federal and state officials will be in Mississippi this morning looking over the damage from Hurricane Elena. So far, almost a half billion dollars in damage done by that ferocious storm on the coast. Here's meteorologist Paul Hefner if you wondered how to dress the kids for the first day of school. Good morning, Paul. I almost put the air conditioner on the car this morning. <laughs> we had the heater on last week. It was muggy. Wow, it changes seasons here. Starting the morning off near 70 degrees, here's a look at the weather watch forecast. If you're wondering how to dress the kids, dress them in some light clothing. Hot today, 87. It'll be hazy tonight. Frank, a pretty warm day tomorrow, but thanks for coming. All right, thank you very much. We'll have more on that weather watch forecast in our next report at 725. Good morning, America, ABC News Next. Have a good day, everyone.